in this way. But one time, when I served in the military, and my father was sent to the hospital, he has a heart attack in the ICU. And oh, I, was, I was very worried about him. I tried to meditate in a Buddhist way, but I just cannot fall asleep. For a week, I, I, just, I just feel I, I am very bad at that time. But at that moment, I remember I visit a Lutheran church in college. So I call one of friends still there. I reach out to her. Oh, uh, my father is in hospital. Can you just pray for us? So we pray together through form. And that night, I fell asleep very soon. For the first time since my father sent to the hospital, I fell asleep. So I realized there's something different than my Buddhist tradition. So after I retired from the military, I keep attending that church. And after all, I baptized in that Lutheran church. In the meantime, I also try to keep my background and my tradition as a Buddhist. I try to learn from both of them. But it was another challenging story that some Christian church in Taiwan, or most of them, they, they, they are not happy that I try to combine my tradition with the Christianity. So there are lots of tension between myself, my family member and me, and my larger families. I always, I always have the trouble there. I always, I do not want to join the gathering to show our respect to our ancestor. I do not want to eat that before you use that for the worship service. And lots of things. And my great uncle said to my mom, What's going on with that boy? <laughs> he said, what, what, What's going on? And my mom and my father told to them, Oh, the boy needs time to find his own way. Oh, this is what the Buddhist thoughts that people can find their own way. They always need to take time to find their own way. So I feel I, I was accepted directly by my mom and my father. Yeah, so this is the story. And why many church cries is important to me. That um, that Lutheran church is important for me. But when I go back to that church after I retired from the military service, I noticed something that, oh, some of my friends in the college, they were attending that church, they disappeared. They don't want to attend that church. I just feel confused what's going on. I just cannot figure out any answer from the church. I was disappointed at that time. But when I try, when I attend the Pride Parade in Taiwan, in Taipei, 2003, the first, the first Pride Parade in Taiwan, 2003, I was there. There were only 200 people marched in the parade. In the capital of Taiwan, only 2,000 people marched there. And more than half of them need, need to wear special masks. Only the eyes oh. can show up. We still live in kind of fear. We cannot just express ourselves. I was one of the volunteers there marching with the 2,000 people. And I met one of the uh, lady who attended the Lutheran Luther's church before. I saw her, I approached her, I asked her, why you are here? Why you are here? And she told me, oh, I want to uh, participate in the Pride Parade. And so you are, yes, I'm lesbian, I'm always lesbian. So, so what's going on? I come back to the church, but you are, you are not there. And she told me, she came up to the minister, and the minister said to her, oh, it's a sin, you need to change. At that time, she has a very close friend, and her close friend, also in the church. They were forced to, to separate, and they were heartbroken. And she tried very hard to come into the church, but she never felt accepted. And afterward, she said to me, she's done with church. And no longer want to go to the church. It's a very huge impact I made. So this is a church that do not embrace us. 
and I feel I have no idea about that. So after the parade, I think about what's going on in the church. At that time, I had a very long hair after I returned from military service. Hair like to here. So the people have the hair such long, you always need to have something to handle your hair. And I pick up a, a light green thing to handle my hair in the back. So people will see this light green things on my head. And the minister told me, can you just pick up black ones, other colors? And I would say light green is too, too, too much. And during the summer in Taiwan, maybe just like here in New Jersey, very hot. So you have custom in Asia who will use umbrella in a light colored umbrella to protect you from the sunlight. And I also have an umbrella with me among all other boys. I'm the only one with an umbrella. And I, my umbrella is in color pink. Mm. It's a light pink. I said it should be the pink, right? I just have a pink umbrella walking down the street with all my church people. And the minister said to me, oh, can you uh, pick up another color? Black. <laughs> I just feel confused. And I realized, oh, those colors, they, it, they seem reference to different things. I was supposed to only use a particular color. I also sense something in the background, kind of noise, that tried to correct me all the time. I realized that. So I think, I think this might be a very challenging place for me to keep here. But fortunately, at the private rate, I met a group of people, they from this church, Tongguang Lai House, Presbyterian Church. It was the only church attend the Pipe Parade at that time, 2003, wow. only then. There are about 30 people there attend the parade, and only three of them do not wear special mask <laughs> on their face. I met them, I started to join their worship, and I stayed for some time there before I started my seminary study. Is I met this church. This church was established by Reverend Yang Hui Yang. She attended Chicago Theological Seminary, my semi current seminary, in 1993. She graduated with a Master of Sacred Degree, Sa Master of Sacred Theology Degree in 1994. And she went back to Taiwan. There was uh, Chicago Temple Seminary is belong to United Church of Christ. So she learned about this church and history. They opened their arms to LGBT people. Uh, there are some faculties at CTS, they are LGBT faculties. And she write down her first impressions that when she sat in front of a seminary building, she noticed there are two boy students, they hand in hand sitting on the bench. They are a couple, a census couple. They attend the same school. That opened her eye. All this school accepts gay people and all the people in this school. She started to learn different theology. She never learned before. And she came to Taiwan. At that time, we have a special platform called BBS. Anyone still remember that BBS? In that website, there's no World Wide Web app at all, the only BBS, the text-based forum. She met lots of college students on that platform. And those students, they are gay and lesbian students. They are looking for a church that can embrace them, but there's none. So Reverend Young started a fellowship. The first gallery, they have 50, more than 50 college students they never met before, but they gather together at a coffee shop. And they start to worship together. And it was 1995. In 96, they start the first LGBT congregation in Taiwan. In 1996. So I'm fortunate. I'm very fortunate to met them in 20 and 2003, the first pipe parade. So I joined their service afterwards. It's the first time I realized that when the church opened arms to LGBT people. There are lots of people they want to come. That was my first impression. And in 2008, Reverend Yang Huiyang passed away. She, after she left the 
the congregation. It is very difficult for her to find another church, want to hire her. Most of churches, they say that, oh, you support the gay people, so we do not want to hire you. So she had a very difficult time to find a congregation to continue her service. In 2008, unfortunately, she committed suicide. It's a heartbroken story for the whole congregation and all, all the people who know her. We just feel very bad and very sad about what could be happened. And I attend her funeral service was hosted by Presbyterians of Church. And I was feel so sad with the whole process. And also during the funeral service, I feel something that someone should continue Reverend Young's ministry. Someone should do something right now. So I continue my journey to another door to the seminaries in Taiwan. I not one of seminary for three times. I and I, I pass all the exams. But uh, when we have interview, the professors that ask me very tricky questions. In the interview, that I realized, oh, it's the professor. They are not welcome me. They are not welcome me. We are not welcome here. I tried three times for the same seminary. I was rejected for the same reason. It belonged to the LGBT community. They used different reasons to reject me, to turn me down. All the all the exam, I, I might have the highest points among all the students. I was rejected for the same reason. But God opened another door for me. Another seminary opened a door for me, and I attend the, the school. I also take an exam, an interview, and professor invited me to sit down with them. The first sentence they say that is, we knew your story at the other seminary, but here it's different. We can have a new beginning. The first sentence they said to me, and they care about how can I fulfill my calling as a minister, who are the flock I am trying to take good care of. They try to understand and support me, and they accept me as the first open gate seminarians in Taiwan, in that seminary, and in history in, in Taiwan's Christian history too. And I realized that a professor in that seminary, they graduate from my current seminary, Chicago Theological Seminary. You can learn from United Church of Christ that we should open up to our best to accept everyone who's seeking for God. So I realized that and when I graduated from that seminary, my advisor encouraged me to come to the United States to join United Church of Christ, learn with them and learn from them. In this summer day, God can use you and you can bring back the good news to the people you care about in Taiwan. So the reason why I'm here today is that God has used me today to share my story and message with you. So I realized the United Church of Christ is far more important than I realized. So we talk about the first ordination in 1972. I was not born yet. <laughs> Before I was born, something had happened in the United Church of Christ. Something had gradually prepared everything for me and for everyone who is seeking for God's love. The reason why I'm here attend the seminary at Chicago. Yeah, yes. And I was just an innocent boy, right? Just graduated in Taiwan and got offered to the CTS in Chicago. I buy the tickets and fly 14 hours or just feel frustrated and land it and go to Hyde Park. And several days later, I start visiting different church. Right, the first thing we to do is find a church, find a home. I visit different church, try to visit their website first, right? Visit their web, 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 uh, website and Facebook, try to figure out who they are, how they believe, do they just embrace the LGBT people? I try hard. And I visit one of the church that I assume it should be fine for me. You know, church also in the of Christ. So I ordered myself must be a very good church. 
And I also learned how to open the firm in church, ish. So I visit them, uh, join them. But there's something interesting I still cannot figure out. When I turn around for the church building, front door, back door, backyard, everywhere, I assume the open and firm in church, they might have kind of rainbow flag. Even larger or smaller, it should be something there to let people to recognize, oh, this is a church where will come all the people. But I cannot find it. So when I enter the, the building, uh, maybe there's something inside. There's Chicago, you know, sometimes very windy, the winter is too bad, so maybe they hide a rainbow flag inside the building. But I enter the building, I can't find any rainbow flag either. So I open the curtains. Our curtain is different here though. In Glen Ridge, we have a court where you can use God instead of the Father. We can use the, the Redeemer instead of Son. We try to use some, a more different idea in our daily worship. But the worship bulletin, you cannot feel who oh, is really welcome me or welcome in the gender non-binary people care. I cannot really feel it. I just feel, hmm, it seems it's no different than other church that just assume people, LGBT people to say there is not the case. This is my first impression of United Church of Christ. So not all the UCC church, they are open and firm enough for the people to stay. So I asked one of the ladies, is there any other LGBT people in our congregation? Besides me, not me, I, I, I should not be the only one. The lady told me, oh, yeah, there's one 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> that might say something about the congregation. <coughs> so I feel, mm, yes, there is some connection issues here. And afterwards, I, I decided to join another UCC church uh, uh, in my neighborhood. And I stayed there and got ordained there and also work for the congregation here today. So this is my experience that my, it's, it may I can experience something strange in that church. I, I might not be willing to go back to that church. I cannot feel anything that I really love, really impressed by the congregation. I think it's important for any church to keep improving, we really impress or open our arm to all the people in our neighborhood. So it's my church over a journey that um, my church is a uh, long history. My church is affiliated with three denominations, Peace USA, UCC, and UMC. That is a combination of three denominations. And my church started to do the open affirming in 1999, actually, from the outreach committee. They do a survey, internal survey to all congregants. What do you think about uh, gay and lesbian? Do you welcome them to join our church? Do you, we also, do you welcome them? But if, do you have any other criteria for them? Do they need to follow extra criteria or not? Or do they allow to have the equal civil right, just like us? The, the, the survey very detailed to ask all the questions from the congregation. In turn out, 86% of people say that we are welcome them and we should not do anything else on them. We should not ask them to follow anything else and they should have the same civil rights, just like us, just like everyone, in 1999. So in 2001, we a draft the first open and firm covenant and statement was accepted by the church council. And there's another team formed at that time to continue in ministry. And that's it. Nothing happened afterwards. I, I have no idea why, but I assume the Aush committee was formed with a group of UCC people. They want to respond to a general synod 
1985, a resolution. But there are some conflict or challenges within the congregation. So I cannot find any other documents about that team and what's going on with this statement. So in 2001, uh, the church council said that well, maybe we can do the, this time again. In 2021, we we'll do that again. So uh, we formed a team. We also invited people to join. And when we announced we were doing this, open the firm deposit in our church again, that I was nervous. Oh, maybe there are lots of people, they, they won't be happy about it, or what's going on next. And, but on the contrary, it, it turned out a movement, a cross-generational movement in my church. There are so many ladies you know, you know the church ladies, they, they hold everything in their homes, library, basement. They call each other and they call me. I remember at that time we have a kind of report in our congregational meeting. Someone picked up, or oh, I would have half of that. Another lady said, I have the whole thing. And the people will contact me, provide me all the documents they have from their basement, from their library. People call to each other to try to make these puzzles, a whole puzzle, a whole picture. What's going on at that time? How can we move from there? So we turned out we find the original statement in 2001. And all the notes by different ladies, oh, this term is not good, that term should be revised. All the notes on that. It's quite an amazing movement among all the congregations. And we start this uh, group in 2021, and we make an interesting video. We invite people to do this video. May I show the video to you? Sure. Please tell me what you saw in this video. Almost. So some of the video form outdoors, you can hear the birds flying away. <laughs> and some of them rate themselves in front of their computer and combine together. And people are happy about this show video. It seems that the video tells a story that is a cross-generational work. We want to bring it together on different ethnic group, different age, and different time participate in the church. For me, I'm the new, I'm the new member. Some member they born there, some member there for all their lives. Yeah, they start from all the ladies. They collect all the documents from the basement and the library. Is the the statement? Yes, please. I just want to comment on the simplicity of the message, which for me is it, it feels very truthful to look around in any room or group of people anywhere and to see 
the Christ in us, see the Holy Spirit above them. That's what God has asked us to do all along, before I even knew anything about anybody, anything along the spectrum of the LGBTQ community. So I love that that's how it resonates, and I would love to see that on television in places where people are like, yes, look at that, yes, that's happening, because the more you see it, the more your heart opens a little bit more, and, and me, my heart opens more, and my judgments and my things that I, I don't understand don't matter, because the bottom line is we are all children of God, regardless of what church we worship in, <coughs> regardless of the clothing we wear, or all those things don't separate. Thank you. Can I have your name? My name is Loretta. Loretta. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, we can feel that too. Yeah. I like the video because it began in a way that I feel is this final word that should be spoken, but nobody was saying what was, what you almost was wanting to hear the conclusion of the message, um, and it was sort of static to me, and it, it just seemed so simple. So the video was excellent. Oh, thank you. I would let everyone know if it's to my church. <laughs> they are famous here in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, because we also noticed that we have more and more uh, our youth that identify themselves as gender non-binary. So we, or we intentionally invite two of our youth to join our project. And they were very happy to join us. But both of them, their pronouns is they, them, and he, them. They feel that, oh, someone finally listened to our voice, really take good care of us. They also share the message with their friends. So uh, we now have our youth program right now that we do not have a youth program for years. But we start this program this year after we accept the open the statement and this video. And during the pandemic, even during the pandemic, we have 15 youth showed up, uh, all their friends, they noticed oh, this is a safe space for, for us to come. This uh, something happened, right? Something different because of this movement. It transformed the whole congregation to think together. So we also, uh, we plan our event according to the Open Affirmative Process Guideline to arrange several events of all online. So we'll announce those events on Facebook and YouTube. And interesting thing is, we assume nobody were interested in that but our church member. But we are wrong. There are lots of people they notice from Facebook or from our website. They tune in, they are not our church member. They want to know oh, what can we talk about the Bible to include the LGBT people. How, how, what do you say your pronoun is he, them? What does that mean? We want to know more about that. We draw some people outside the church to join this event. So during the whole process, we keep visit. There are more people visiting us, try to know more about us, join our in-person service too. This is my our experience. Then we passed the statement this year in the congregational meeting. And in the 100% support of the wars was is a huge difference than 1999. There's something different. I think I believe the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit moved us to understand that we might not be need to agree with each other, but all we agree is we want to open the door for everyone who is seeking for God's love. We should do that. I think that made a, the biggest difference. And this year, during the congregational meeting, the financial committee gave us a very exciting uh, report. It's the first year, in the past 10 years, in the first year, end of the year, we still have money left in our end account. It's quite different. In the past 10 years, we always all negative again this year. But in 2021, during pandemic, it seems that we are doing much better than before. So what's going on? I don't know. Only God knows what's going on, right? <laughs> so we do experience something quite different in our journey. And this coming Sunday, next Sunday, we will host the uh, open and firm celebrations in our courtyard. We will we reach out to all LGBT communities in Hyde Park 
some from university, some from the local organizations. And also those people who participate in our program before, we invite all of them to join us in our courtyard to celebrate our achievement. Especially right now, spring, weather is good, flower ready, grass ready, and the wine is ready too. So <laughs> we prepare for a celebration this coming Sunday afternoon. Yes. Yeah, it changed. Okay. Yeah, the original one told a terrible open affirming United Church of High Park conversation on welcoming lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender people. Some term might be outdated, and some term need to be added to that. And because we are affiliated with three different denominations, now UCC, also PCUSA, and UMC, so we decide to fulfill all three denominations requirement all in once. So we include the original one also include from Presbyterians, also include from Methodists into our statement. And the statement is uh, a bit longer than the original one. Also revise the term to update it. And because we know people who live in Thai Park, we have 47% they are quote unquote white people. There are 20, 26, they are African American. There are 15 Asian American. There are 12 Latino, Latinx. So we noticed that we translate our open and firm statement, not only in English, also in Korean, Mandarin, and Spanish. So we try to let the community know we really care about you, we want to speak in your language, use your term to let you know we care about you. This is uh, another journey for us to then maybe some other day we'll have different kind of worship service in different language. I think it's just God just moving us. Thank you for your question.